um, we we knew that Iran was supplying these drones known as Shahids, uh, which have been uh, taking a terrible toll in recent weeks in Ukraine, especially last week and this week. Um, but um, it's only just emerged from you uh, from American intelligence sources that there are actually Iranian uh, military personnel who are in Crimea, occupied an occupied part of Ukraine, training um, Russians to operate these um, drones, because apparently the Russians were finding it difficult to operate them, even though they'd been trained in Iran. So apparently um, the, the Russians invited the Iranians to come um, and, and, and train them close to the um, battlegrounds. And, and this kind of time, I can't work out whether that is a, a strategic alliance that's taking its formal effect on the ground or, or whether it's a, a desperation move, because actually Putin hasn't made the advances and in some places is being fought back in a way he didn't expect. Yeah, it's it's um, difficult to know how to um, describe this because the Iranians keep denying that they've got, that they've um, supplied the Russians with any drones. Uh, they're very keen not to be associated with the um, um, Russians yet. Um, um, there they are, spotted um, in Crimea, operating in Crimea. And um, to your point, is it a sign of desperation? Many believe on the British and, and, and US military and analysts that it is indeed um, a sign that the Russians are, lie, uh, are running low on their own um, uh, rockets and, and missiles because they've been using them for uh, all these months when they calculated that it would all be over in, in February. And, and so they're turning to the likes of Iran and North Korea, which manufactures Soviet-style um, weapons and, and munitions uh, to supply their own army, which is um, getting increasingly bogged down in Ukraine. Now, in, in terms of the wider conflict, one of the, the things that we've seen in the last couple of days is both the Ukrainians saying that they're expecting an attack on a critical dam uh, in, in Ukraine by the Russians, and Russia saying that they're expecting a false flag operation, that, that Ukraine's actually going to target it and blame them for it. And to be honest, I, I, I kind of wouldn't really care who, if I was in the, the path of where the water would go, what happens as long as the dam doesn't break. Yeah, exactly. Um, if if it does, if it is targeted um, and it breaks, um, then it is going to be a massive disaster. I, I, I don't know what we'd compare it to in, um, um, say, the rest of Europe over the last decade. And um, I think it is clear uh, that it's not going to be uh, the Ukrainians who do this to themselves. And um, this has just been a... a uh, a kind of uh, knee-jerk reaction of the Russians every time um, a Russian missile destroys, a, say, a supermarket with um, um, lots of civilian dead or a hospital or a school, they say, oh, look, um, the Ukrainians did it and uh, they're blaming um, us. Ukraine's got no motive uh, to destroy this um, dam. And um, if Russia does do it, it's going to be... Um, causing a lot of harm to um, people in areas that it claims are now um, part of, of, of Russia. And the ecological um, damage uh, will be um, um, enormous. And as I say, I, I don't know what we'd compare mm. it to. Mm.